Hello everyone, welcome to this build video of the sample and hold plus noise module. There are basically two ways of getting hold of the parts to build this module, and one is to download the Gerber files and BOM from my GitHub and order the PCBs and components yourself. Or you can buy it as a kit from my Tindy shop. If you buy the kit from my Tindy shop, this is what it looks like. You get the PCB with all the SMT components pre-soldered, together with the PCB panel. The PCBs are packaged in a protective plastic bag, which keeps the semiconductor safe from electrostatic discharge, and surfaces are protected against scratches. The rest of the through-hole components are packaged together in a bag. The kit includes a low-leakage polypropylene capacitor, a boxed power header, a small trimmer potentiometer, electrolytic capacitors, and four Thonkicon jacks with knurled nuts. But let's kick off the build by removing the plastic bag of the front panel PCB. The main PCB with all SMT components. And also the red LED. To complete the build you will need a couple of tools. A soldering iron, some solder wire, and you will also need a wire cutter. Alright, let's start by assembling the component side, and for this you will need the capacitors and the boxed power connector. Start by mounting the power connector. Make sure that the small triangle is located towards the white stripe in the silk print marked red wire. I recommend the technique to solder the one leg first and reheat the solder joint while pressing the connector to the PCB to make sure that it is properly seated. After that you can solder the rest of the pins. Next step is to solder the electrolytic capacitors near the power connector. They are polarized so make sure that you mount them correctly. The white marking on the body of the capacitor should be located towards the large white area on the silk print. Use the wire cutter to trim the legs of the capacitors after soldering them. Finally, you can solder the large polypropylene capacitor to the PCB. And trim the legs, of course. Alright, that's one side of the PCB finished. Next up is the top side with the pots, jacks and the red LED. But don't solder anything yet. Start by mounting the potentiometer, and then you can add all the jacks and finally the LED. The LED is polarized and has an anode and a cathode side. The cathode is the shorter leg with a flat edge on the flange at the bottom of the LED housing. The cathode should be oriented towards the white marking on the PCB silk print. Now you can mount the PCB panel to hold everything in place. Hand tighten the nuts, turn the module upside down and make sure that the LED is placed correctly in the PCB panel hole before you solder everything in place. Finally, trim the legs of the LED, and now the module is finished. Oh, one more thing. It's always a good idea to check the power leads for shorts before you plug it in. Use a multimeter for that. Okay, but uh, how does this module work then? Let's plug a clock signal into the trigger input to set the sample rate. The signal input is normal to the noise source, so if we don't connect anything to the signal input, the module will sample random noise at every clock trig. The red LED will light up when the input signal is sampled. The signal level potentiometer controls the span of the input signal around 0 volts. So if we increase the input level, the sample signal will increase in range. A setup like this is a great way of generating random control voltages at a given rate. But if we instead connect a slow LFO and sample that, 
you will have a stepped control voltage instead of the continuous wave that you normally get from an LFO. Finally, the noise output can of course be used as a noise source in your system. Good luck with your build. Happy patching and thank you for watching.